We're near the nesting grounds of the Amazonian wood quake. Six months ago, we rescued this little bird from smugglers. But now, my trusty assistant, <laughs> I mean, loving wife and colleague, will release her back to her natural habitat. It's okay. You can go now. Just like this. Let me talk to you. <laughs> Welcome home. Wait a minute. What? I think she's trying to warm us. Oh, no, 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 Linda. <laughs> Tulio, look! Hi, it's me again, Johannes Walters, and we are going to speak here at the Blue Sky Studios with the stereo department about the upcoming Real 2 movie and we're going to speak with the head of stereo Dan Abramovich. Oh, this is because this, those are the, the different types of uh, glasses. Yeah, these are active, passive and the old one and these are fancy. This, they're the same thing. Okay. Just, you know, more expensive. So in the end, I have to, okay, you, you, you tell me when you are... We've been rolling. Oh, my goodness. Um, um, stereo department um, has nothing to do with music. No. How many, no, I can't ask that. Um, it's it's uh, the newest thing, I think, added to, to animation. Um, yeah, it's fairly new. I mean, the, the, the art form of stereography has been around for a few centuries, but in its most recent form is, is um, maybe six, seven, I mean, it's fairly new. And even as a, as a way to use it in film, I feel like a lot of filmmakers are realizing that stereography is now a, another tool. Just the way you use uh, lenses and the way you d do color design and lighting design, 3D and stereography is, a, is another method of telling a story. Mm -hmm. It's not just an effect. You know. Yeah, it, it was, it, for me, when I first heard about it, I, I thought, my goodness, that will be for some time. We will have a additional credit in the in the credits, um, like Technicolor consultant. Right? Yeah. Color came in. Uh, then I, I thought it will be something like stereographic consultant. For some productions, they work that way. You know, they they don't. You know, some productions will do the movie and then make it three D. Okay. But we don't. I mean, that's uh, that keeps it more of a technical approach and. We do, at Blue Sky Studios, we believe that 3D is a tool used to enhance the story and showcase the characters and push the mood and help the emotion of the sequence the same way you use other stuff. So we, we, we use 3D from the very beginning of the production. Everything, all the steps are done in, there's mono and there's 3D, and uh, the director gets to see both versions from the very beginning of digital production. It's I think it's, it's the center question you, you always have to ask a stereographer. How does it enhance the story? For me, it's like still somehow, f uh, if I see the different productions in so-called 3D, they're not very intelligent. But on the other side, you have Coraline, you have Life of Pi, you have Avatar. You have wonderful stories where mm -hmm. you see that the 3D is really yeah. enhancing. But, uh, can you, it's, it's like an uncharted territory for it me. Is. That you really, uh, most people do not know on the map, what is it really doing? Can you share a little bit of your map which you have explored? Yeah, I mean, well, if we think about it with, like, let's see some basic uh, emotions like um, fear and claustrophobia. Um, you know, say so you're, you're, if you want to uh, use stereo to push this feeling, you have somebody, so it, like in Rio, if you have Blue up against a tree or Linda up against a tree and they're nervous, you animate the space compressing and subconsciously the viewer starts to feel tighter. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one way to push the mood of the sequence right there and, and, and that kind of thing. If you, have, uh, if you want to build up anxiety, you know, having characters you know, opening up the space and making things feel like they're traveling for a, long, a longer distance of time, or if they're being chased, but they're not coming close enough to the camera and you see the background character coming closer and getting bigger, that's something you can really enhance with 3D with multiple stereo rigs. So depending on where you distribute the volume, uh, and how abruptly you change the volume can can really change the feeling very very quickly also so you can you can tighten up a space you can open up a space you can make 
you can make a you know a, 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 a tiny room like a cave feel like a coliseum you can make a coliseum feel like a closet depending on, on how you portray it in 3d but uh, um, it sounds very technical what you are doing mm -hmm. by achieving that with how to put those cameras apart and nearer to, to, to make me feel that but you how much have you been uh, also a psychologist that That's you yeah. know what you are doing in terms of because we are all different right and you have to somehow find the middle to 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 push all my emotions and the emotion yeah. of my neighbor in the seat it's a lot of experimenting i mean the, the the job is very technical because you're dealing with a massive amount of data and many artists interacting with it and when do we pull and when do we push the data but then on the other side there's the you know there's the creative side on, on making everything consistent unified and what you're bringing up is like you know why does that kind of stereo mean this type of emotion why does you know and that's a that's something that i experiment with on a daily basis i don't have all the answers for that and i don't know but with the group every single time we get a sequence we try it many different ways and it's usually like a like everything around here is a, is a collaborative effort you know I'll, i'll have an idea and i'll and i'll float it between three of, or four of the guys on the team and then we'll try a, a version we'll do another version i'll show it to the director and i'll explain it to the director our intent here is to push emotions a b c and he'll look at it and say well my reaction is x y z and we'll say oh well what about this version and it, with every production we start to learn so it's uh, the psychologist and the psychology of a few people collaborating and you know it gets it gets tricky have you have you been uh, disappointed by some production not your own mm -hmm. of course but but uh, um, um, you are sitting in the cinema and watching a 3d thing and would you stand up and say that's not working uh, um, or I try to never be that way in any movie I see to be honest with you uh, I'll, I'll go to a movie and if I'm I will never leave a movie I'll watch it all the way it doesn't matter how much it's offending me or I'm hating it. I need to see it all the way through because I don't know what the filmmaker has in mind um, but yeah I've seen I mean just like with visual effects or poor, poor production qualities you, you know there, you, you see such a wide range of quality and sometimes The, the thing that sets 3D apart uh, out of all these things is that it's, it's a physical demand on the audience. You're asking the audience to the, use their eye muscles. So unattractive, bad quality 3D could also mean extreme discomfort for people. So it's, uh, that's where it gets very tricky, and I can see people leaving for that. We, we, we do, do we have to expect some big breakthroughs in stereo storytelling, or is it a step-by-step, tiny-steps process? <laughs> I in think, your opinion? I think, uh, I mean, I, th I feel like there's been big, big breakthroughs already in the past four or five years, and I feel like there's still going to be more. I mean, I'm an optimist when it comes to this stuff. I, I, I think, I feel like we're at the tip of the iceberg, and once the creativity uh, or the technology catches up with the creativity and we're able to see things with, with, you know, right now we have so many different ways of viewing stereo when things become a little less physically intrusive, maybe you know that's it. or the light levels get sorted out because right now it, things are a little darker you know there's a lot of room to grow in the medium right now okay that's uh, so you uh, because many people say it's over and 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 it doesn't work but so you you would uh, uh i would disagree with that i think it's i think it's uh i think it's finding where it belongs right now i, I think it's finding its place in the industry thank you very much thank you very nice Well, at first, I was afraid. I was petrified. I kept thinking that I could never live. I could barely fly. And I spent, oh, so many nights thinking how he did me wrong, and, and I grew strong. And I learned how to get along. I'm a survivor. I got the eye of a tiger, be training the game and eat to my fiber. You be staying alive, well, I be staying alive. Watch where you sit when I spit my saliva like... Oh, oh. You never seen that tucker do? Rocking and shocking and dropping and popping and locking too? I can't believe it. Daddy! You cry? <laughs> It's a heavy moment and I'm very vulnerable right now. Watch what I can do without no auto-tune. Say what? Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, no, he didn't. If you try to keep me down, I'll just come back straight. 
stronger You try to cut me short I'll just come back longer If you beat me at ping pong I'll just play ping ponger Give me my throne, I am ready to thrive One thing I know Back, you barbarian That's adorable <laughs> I will survive We attack at the midnight hour because it's more evil. <laughs> In real D and digital 3D.